Bonsoir, good evening. I'm Adam Radomski. And the topic that I thought I would talk with you about this evening is why I haven't really prepared for this talk. Um, that is actually true. I haven't written any notes. I haven't practiced. I haven't rehearsed. I don't have any PowerPoint slides. Um, and it felt like oh, there were so many wonderful offers of support from both the Walrus and from Concordia that I declined. Um, <clears throat> not because I'm lazy. I'm going to explain to you why. So I study anxiety disorders and related problems. And one of the main things that we focus on is obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, or OCD. OCD is surprisingly common. It affects about 2% of Canadians. That's a large handful of people in this room. Um, and it can be incredibly disabling. The World Health Organization about 15 years ago listed it among the top 10 causes of disability worldwide. It disrupts lives. It ruins lives. Um, it's horrible. And it is sometimes called the doubting disease. Now that's actually a terrible name because it's not a disease, it's a mental disorder, it's not contagious, you can't catch it. But the doubting piece is very interesting. The most common symptoms of OCD are compulsive checking, where people repeatedly go back and verify again and again and again that things are okay. So for example, checking to make sure that your door is locked, and my guess is a lot of you might check perhaps to see if your passport is with you on your way to the airport, maybe more than once. Um, you might check to see that your alarm is set to the right time if you've got an early morning appointment. Imagine living that all day, every day, being terrified that you're just on the cusp of something awful happening. The other, uh, the, the other most common symptom of OCD is compulsive washing or cleaning. So these are people who wash usually their hands, but also other body parts or parts of their home over and over and over again. It can be so severe that people can wash the skin off their hands and it becomes dry and cracked and people will use things like bleach and scalding hot water. It's a ter terrible problem. We've become very interested in doubt because one of the early theories of OCD was that the reason people are doing these things must be that there's something wrong with their memory. Uh, and in fact, a million years ago, my master's thesis uh, examined memory in OCD and what we found was that people with OCD actually have an amazingly good memory. Their memory is superior for particular types of information compared to you and me. So it's not memory accuracy that drives the problem. It's not what people are remembering. And so the mystery sort of continued for a while until a group in the Netherlands, actually based in Maastricht, did the most elegant study where they got undergraduate students. So these were people without OCD and they trained them to check on a computer. Um, and I'll take you through, I, I'm big on methodology, so I'll take you through the design so you can understand what they did. They trained these students to, to, with a mouse to turn on, turn off, and check the knobs on the screen of, of what looked like a gas stove, and they also trained them to turn on and off some dimmer switches for some light bulbs, and they had them all check, for example, please turn on knobs one, three, and five, please turn them off, now check them. Everyone was given a memory test, so which knobs did you just check? And they were also asked a series of questions about their confidence in memory. So how confident are you that those are the knobs you just check? How vivid is your memory for that? And other questions like that. <clears throat> Excuse me, participants were then randomly assigned to either do 20 additional trials of checking on the stove or on the light bulbs. And at the very end of that study, everybody checked the stove and got one final time, <clears throat> excuse me, and then got those same questions. And what they found was amazing. Memory accuracy was solid all the way through. Everybody could remember exactly which knobs they checked at the beginning and at the end. But for the people who checked the stove all the way through that study, their memory confidence fell dramatically. So did the vividness in their memory. So did the detail in their memory. The people who checked the light bulbs in between the two stove checks, well, their memory confidence was near perfect. We took this work to my lab at Concordia, and we replicated the study using a real stove because we thought, well, maybe the idea that might actually be dangerous could, could make a difference. We found exactly the same thing. The study has been replicated with mental checking. So check it in your mind. Find the same thing. The more you check, the less sure you are. And that's very interesting because when you ask people with OCD and even the rest of us, why is it that you're checking that, most people say, well, I really want to be sure, I want to be confident. But what we've found again and again and again in studies that have now been replicated in about six different countries, both in student populations, which is important because if you can get a student to look like they have OCD, you're really finding yourself onto a process that might matter in therapy, in treatment. You might find a process that might help you to understand why do some people have this problem and some people not? <clears throat> Checking disrupts your confidence. 
Now, at this point, normally, if I had seven hours, I would tell you about how we can use that in therapy. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, we are changing lives, and it's, it's remarkable to be able to use science to drive the clinical work that we do with patients and clients. But instead, what I thought I would do is talk a little bit about what I've been thinking might come next. That's the idea that if the more you check, the less sure you become. What happens when you check for years? Maybe that disrupts self-confidence. Maybe someone who's spending so much of their time trying to be sure about something and all they're finding is that they become less and less sure really might start to lead them to question whether they're good enough, whether they're capable, whether they're able. And it's no surprise that about 60% of people with OCD also meet the diagnostic criteria for depression. So if the more you check, the less sure you are, then why didn't I prepare for this talk? <laughs> <clears throat> well, practice is good. You know, practice makes perfect. Um, and if someone had asked me to talk about perhaps one of the other fascinating topics we're getting to hear about this evening, I certainly would have needed to write it down and memorize it or learn it or practice it. But what I've been talking about is the work that I've been doing for the last 10 or 15 years, and I th think I know that reasonably well. Um, I will leave it up to you to determine whether or not this was worth listening to. But one of my goals was that I wanted to feel confident about the things that I was speaking of this evening. I wanted you to feel confident about um, the role of repetition and confidence and doubt and memory and anxiety, which of course plays into that. I want you to be more confident. So if you're not sure about how well you can manage something, practice it until you get good at it. But once you're pretty sure of how good you are, stop practicing. You don't need to overdo it. You'll be more confident as a result. Thank you.